Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and just because you can virtualize PFSense, does that mean you should? Let's talk about that. Now, I prefer bare metal running on real hardware, but there's some pros and cons to each way. So we want to walk through some of these discussions of why you might not want to, especially when new users who are new to PFSense start out going, well, I'll just virtualize it because that seems like it'd be simpler and they may not have as good of an experience because there's some complexities. And that's the first reason to run it on real hardware is because there's less troubleshooting due to less complexity. The intricacies of adding a hypervisor, which has a virtualized network adapter, then you virtualize your PFSense on there, you can run into issues, especially around VLANs. VLANs are a struggle, especially for a lot of new users. And you've now added a complexity layer to setting VLANs up with each hypervisor having different ways they handle this. And, you know, this can be an extra learning curve. So if you don't even know the product already, you're going to now add some complexity. And then sometimes it may perform poorly under load or not get the transfer rates. We don't know if it's because PFSense has been misconfigured or if it's because the hypervisor has been misconfigured or some conflict due to some update. So that less complexity and troubleshooting goes for real hardware. Now, the part about hardware. Hardware is not that expensive. You can use PFSense on most any x86 hardware. You can pop in an Intel NIC and lots of things already have this. There's plenty of low power devices available. You can buy the NetGate hardware and it just doesn't take a lot of compute, memory, or hard drive space in order to run PFSense. You can get gigabit speeds with a several year old computer uh, perfectly fine and there's plenty of those laying around. Next, PFSense is easy to reload and restore. You only need the config.xml file. So I get it, virtualization is easy to back up because you're snapshotting a whole virtual machine, but you just got one config file to restore. Next is the boot environments that are related to it. So if you have a snapshot you're looking for, instead of using it in Hypervisor, if you have the PFSense Plus, which is free for home users, free for the lab, PFSense Plus supports boot environments. It's also free on the NetGate hardware and boot environments will even let you roll to a new version of PFSense and roll back. It creates snapshots in time. So if you want to experiment with your PFSense, they are OS level snapshots. And I have a whole video dedicated to boot environments. Next, if there's a problem with your hypervisor, everything gets taken down. This can be a real challenge. Now, granted, if you have several hosts and you can migrate your PFSense to another one of your hosts, but in general, a lot of people are trying to run this in a home lab. And if the hypervisor goes down, the internet goes down with it. And therefore your troubleshooting may be hampered by doing this, being able to Google things because your firewall is now down and your internet's down and you're going, okay, how do I figure this out and get it back up. So that can be kind of a challenge. And I've seen people who delay updates to their hypervisor because they're worried about, you know, oh man, I got to take down PFSense and I got to take down my network when I do this update. And yeah, that's a factor, something to consider, but that comes with the complexity of doing it that way. One last thing I'll mention on the potential problem side is if you are taking one of the ports of your hypervisor and exposing it so you can put it on the WAN for PFSense, you now have a port closer to the edge of the network. And if there's a stack level type of attack, there's a flaw in the stack of the way the hypervisor handles things, not the way PFSense handles things, you now have that port exposed to the internet. Now, granted, it should be firewalled and only allowing the traffic to go to the one virtual machine within there. But if there's some other flaw within the way the hypervisor handles its virtual networks, that could be a potential for security. It's just something to keep on your radar. I don't know of any absolute ways to exploit this, but it's something to consider just as an attack surface. Now, there's a couple pros to running it in a virtual environment. And that first one is, of course, the biggest reason people want to do this is less hardware. Um, if you only have one machine, hey, great, then that machine can do everything. It has your hypervisor, all the VMs you want to run or whatever else you have on there. And then you throw your firewall in there. Now you have one device. That is a cost savings. It is a power savings. It is space savings. And especially with the energy costs being high, I really get it why people want to put these all in one place to minimize the amount of systems that they're supplying energy to, but kind of back up to the low end hardware. It doesn't take too much energy. You can find some reasonably uh, low powered things to run a firewall. Next is passing through a network adapter that alleviates many of the complexity problems and other complaints I had set up. This is a popular way to set it up in your virtual environment where you just pass the network adapter through in your hypervisor right to PFSense. This solves that security potential issue, uh, the VLAN issue, and a lot of the other troubleshooting problems. That's not a bad way to go if you're going to do that. So you just pass the NIC through and that's a good way to do it and keep those cost savings and those benefits of having a virtual. But 
Nonetheless, it's really your decision to make. We do have our lab that I have a virtual PF sense out of convenience, but if I reboot my hypervisor or the lab goes down, no one's really bothered by it but me because I can't make videos with my lab and my staff can't complete something. So I don't mind running the one virtual, but all the business side, I run all on hardware. But what do you run? What is your preferred method for setting this up? Is it hypervisor plus pass through? Is it just raw hypervisor? Because that's the way you like to run PFSense. Let me know in the comments down below what your combination is. I'm kind of curious what the uh, audience says about this. And uh, if you want to have more in depth about this and other topics, head over to my forums for that discussion. Thanks. Mm -hmm.